In this episode of the Hunky Vape Global 20, it's exit stage left for Avail Vapor. 90% of smokers support e-cigarettes for harm reduction, and science continues to show that vaping is the most effective tool to quit smoking. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape, Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy and News for the week ending January 11th, 2022. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's season two, episode one, because this content needs to become evergreen instead of disposable. Just like the vaping industry needs to push for more evergreen refillable open tank systems instead of accepting disposable favoring regulations designed to cripple, decapitate, or maim the single best way to quit smoking. So first and foremost, let's recap what we learned last year. In the countdown to World Vape Day, ant-driven regulations continue to eviscerate vaping, but data clearly shows that these regulations only drive more people to smoke deadly combustible cigarettes. Meanwhile, the US FDA places its modified risk tobacco product approval stamp on Philip Morris's Heat Not Burn Icos, and China sells out to the Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomberg conglomerate known as the World Health Organization. Deadly mistake ban on flavored nicotine products led teenagers to smoke more cigarettes. British American Tobacco is doing studies on vaping for a long time since it first hit the market because they knew at some point in time something was going to come along that was going to displace their product off of the marketplace. What's going to be the next technological evolution in the tobacco arena? You think that they didn't know about this? You think that they haven't been studying this since the very first electronic cigarette came out? You think that they don't have scientists out there realizing what needs to be done to be able to diversify their company and keep them on the market 50 years down the road? Here we are, 10 years of scientific evidence on vaping. 10 years of cumulative evidence. And this isn't the Cochrane Foundation. This one was literally put together by British American Tobacco and contains 300 different studies. 300 from over 50 institutions over the past decade. You want to say that there isn't any scientific studies out there? Take a look at it. There's a link in the description below, and you'll come to the same conclusion that I did. This is tobacco harm reduction, because here's the comprehensive evidence. And if you don't like reading scientific studies, you don't have to read it. Here's a 12-page PDF for you to look down, and they included lots of beautiful pictures. I'm sorry they didn't leave places for you to take your crayons out and color it in while you go and peruse through the data that's out there. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out the same thing that I talk about every single week, how it's important for people to have ready access to the safer alternative product. Instead of banning this product, why don't you ban the product that is killing people every single day? And for every single person that gets killed every day by tobacco, there are 30 people who are living with a health condition that needs medical attention by a doctor and a pharmacist. There's the financial motivation that gets people to fight against the safer alternative product. You wonder why I'm so cynical? It's common sense. When you realize the disgusting truth, it eviscerates your soul. Such greed and corruption can take place in this planet. All around the globe, the price of a pack of cigarettes is not going up. But the price of combustion eliminating products is increasingly taxed to oblivion. Even in the UK, where they realize the importance of tobacco harm reduction, tobacco duty rise is left out of the budget, while harm reduction products continually face increasing opposition. Why? Data clearly indicates the enormous societal cost of smoking. In Pakistan alone, cigarette use costs a whopping $3.85 billion from 15 million smokers. Why? Don't elected officials see the big picture? Obviously not. Like most of society, they're simply stuck in an uninformed pejorative posture based on misguided stigmatism. Over the past century, views on smoking have transformed dramatically from socially acceptable, almost expected, to more moralized and disgusting. In line with this conversion, lawmakers continually ignore science in favor of evangelical parents. Ignorant parents 
raging on a misguided, zealous crucifixion of harm reduction products. Parents catch their children using a jewel or a puff bar and instantly vilify the manufacturer of these products rather than admit any responsibility in the situation. Heaven forbid these parents take a step back, calm down, and analyze the situation for what it truly is. Because if they did, these parents might realize they're the ones that are culpable in the trauma or neglect which led the child to seek drug abuse, violent behavior, hypersexuality, or even self-harm. Cannabis isn't a gateway drug. Alcohol isn't a gateway drug. Nicotine isn't a gateway drug. Caffeine isn't a gateway drug. Trauma is the gateway. Molestation is the gateway. Neglect is the gateway. Drug abuse, violent behavior, hypersexuality, and self-harm are symptoms of much, much bigger issues. Think about that for a second. Now think about the bigger issues that confront society as a whole. What is the most damaging preventable cause of harm to society? Think about what is killing one person every five seconds. Whoops, another person just died from smoking. One billion smokers combust 18 billion cigarettes a day and over 6.5 trillion cigarettes every single day. Year. Isn't it time to focus on the biggest preventable cause of death on the planet? What if I told you there was already a product invented in 2003 that accidentally causes people to quit smoking? Now, what if this product was just 1% safer than smoking? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you have to support that? I mean, it's safer. Well, even if it's 1% safer, think of the lives you could save. Wouldn't you want this product available and cheaply sold everywhere? How about if this product was 50% safer than smoking? Or 75% safer? Or 95% safer? Or even, what if it was 99% safer than smoking? You can argue all day long about how much safer vaping is compared to smoking, but doing so would let another 22,000 people die from smoking. The fact is that vaping is not smoking. Vaping is safer than smoking, and it's time to end the war on vaping. It's time for culpable parents to focus on their true ordained purpose of raising happy, healthy children, and let lawmakers and scientists focus on the real villain of society. And that villain isn't Juul, and it certainly isn't vaping technology. Vaping technology is a game changer and will one day eliminate the real gangster at play here, which is combustion. This week, smoking killed more people than tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and COVID combined. The tobacco epidemic death rate is higher than the combined death rate of tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and now COVID combined. You wonder why I advocate for tobacco harm reduction so hard? Because people's lives depend on it. Father's Day weekend, I found out that my son went back to smoking cigarettes. He knows my stance on it. He knows the science behind it. But it's so much easier to get a pack of cigarettes than it is to have harm reduction products and keep the supplies on hand that you need to keep using them. So he's back to smoking. And that's exactly what's going to happen here in Germany. The tax increases that they're putting forward right now are going to drive people back to smoking. Because it's going to be cheaper for you to smoke and combust tobacco than it is for you to use a harm reduction product. Recent study from the Yale School of Public Health has suggested that banning the sale of flavored vaping products is going to cause a higher rate of cigarette smoking among teenagers. Uh, I don't understand if people were to simply look at the science behind it, why is there even an argument? I know, somebody left a comment last week and let me know, oh, well, as soon as you realize that it's the tobacco companies that are going to make the money on it. I says, yeah, I know. I know it's the tobacco companies that are making the money on it. I know the pharmaceutical industry is making money on it. There's all kinds of people making money on it and they're all for it. Who's standing up for the consumer? Who's standing up for the average Joe out there? The average citizen whose life depends on it. If you don't stand up for your own rights, for your own health, nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to stand up against these big corporations. They're only worried about one thing, money. That's all they care about. Apple now allows you to order marijuana delivery. Apple now allows their app store to host apps for firms 
that deliver weed right to your front door. But if you want to quit smoking using a harm reduction product, Apple says that's not allowed on our platform. It's not allowed on our devices. Sorry. These hypocritical Puritans don't want a combustion-free world. They only want a tobacco-free world. Sorry. You're still allowed to burn as much cannabis as you want. But we'll get to that later. So, now that you understand their playbook, Altria urges the FDA to clarify that nicotine does not cause cancer. Did you hear that? Nicotine does not cause cancer. Well, would you be surprised to find out that most doctors think that nicotine causes cancer? Bullshit! And it gets worse. 83% of doctors think nicotine causes heart disease, and it doesn't. 81% of doctors think that nicotine causes COPD. It doesn't. The misinformation campaign by these Puritan hypocrites has gotten people to ignore common sense and totally ignore fundamental science. Now that people ignore common sense and everyone's focused on stomping out tobacco, it's time for them to make their little move. Altria gets into pot. Altria buys into Canadian cannabis industry. They sold a bunch of new shares of stock and bought up 45% of the shares of Kronos. Hey, don't worry. Apple lets you have somebody deliver weed right to your door if you don't want to grow your own. Just pull out your iPhone, click on the app, and it's all yours, baby. But if you want to quit smoking using a harm reduction product, Apple says that's not allowed on our platform. It's not allowed on our devices. Sorry. Money. That's all I care about, money. Vaping gentrification continues as PMI buys Victura Pharmaceuticals. And if you're not familiar with Victura, they are a pharmaceutical company that specializes in bringing inhaled medicines to market. From pharmaceutical research to formulation and device platform development, Vectra is inhaling device technology epitomized. And now it's owned by PMI, money. That's all I care about, money. Smoking has a crazy cost associated with use. And no surprise there, considering it's the leading cause of preventable death across the globe. But that fact does not change smokers' behavior. Smokers know the risk, but they smoke anyway. Until one day when they realize that smoking's really taking a toll on their body, and maybe it might be a good idea to stop. You know, these patterns are consistent, and yet, Organizations and entities continue to study it only to find the exact same results that others have already found. Well, Eurospees found 30.5% of smokers don't want to quit. 26% say that they'd like to quit, but they don't think that they can. Since we're talking about science, let's get to the science. An educational intervention can help vapors use their electronic cigarettes to quit smoking. Moffitt Cancer Center researchers say results could help expand the public health potential of electronic cigarettes. Our study indicates that dual users could benefit from specific interventions that leverage their ongoing e-cigarette use, which in turn could expand the public health potential of electronic cigarettes. Study finds drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco may reduce a person's risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Previous studies already documented the fact people who smoke and or drink have a protective factor against Parkinson's. But now this study demonstrates a cause and effect relationship as it evaluated 1.2 million people to identify genetic links between alcohol drinking and tobacco smoking behaviors. And while this study was looking for answers about Parkinson's, it once again reveals that genetic makeup may predispose some of us to seek addictive substances. For some, it might be alcohol. For others, it's nicotine. And depending on your genetic makeup, it might be both or a host of other things that your body is going to naturally crave. You know, that's the wonderful thing about science. Once the truth is revealed and confirmed by other scientists, society can actually do something to improve lives. Just like with harm reduction, science has proven vaping is less harmful than smoking. So if you have a genetic predisposition to smoking, Vaping allows you to get the substance that your body naturally seeks out and to consume it using a safer harm reduction product. Why isn't a vape shop allowed to tell their customers about the 10,000 scientific studies proving 
how much safer vaping is than smoking, or how much more effective vaping is to quit smoking the nicotine replacement therapy, Philip Morris International wants to unsmoke the world and stop UK cigarette sales in the next decade. British American Tobacco says, hold on a minute. Yeah, we need to explore beyond nicotine, but to stop selling cigarettes in a country would only mean a thriving black market, just like there was in South Africa during the emergency COVID tobacco ban. The global number of smokers has not significantly changed. When one government legislates it out of existence, it just grows a black market. It doesn't stop people from wanting to smoke. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at Panama, where the government taxed it to oblivion. 80% of the cigarettes consumed in Panama come from the black market. Did it stop the smokers? Nope. But it did create a black market. Excessive taxation and prohibition does not work. Taking a look at their website, it's obvious British American Tobacco is focused on a better tomorrow through science and innovation. But looking at the headlines, what we find out is that cigarette alternatives are exactly what their customers want. And a vaping shift is eventually going to happen. So, like any good business, they're going to face this existential crisis the same way Philip Morris International is. Switching to cannabis and vaping. Non-cigarette sales already grew to 12.5%, and this tobacco giant knows cannabis is part of their future. Here's a report from Bulgaria admitting to the future, and here's another one from the Czech Republic stating the exact same thing. It's becoming obvious tobacco companies are placing combustion on hospice care and ordering a tombstone for cigarette smoking. None of this should come as a surprise to you because ever since the Master Settlement Agreement in 1998, Big Tobacco stopped fighting legislation and instead embraced it as a way for them to be the only viable sellers of these products. Are you stupid or something? A perfect example of this is U.S. Senate Bill 2445, a bill to apply user fees to all tobacco products. And it's going to be known as the Resources to Prevent Youth Vaping Act. Mark Twain was right. The glory which is built upon a lie soon becomes a most unpleasant encumbrance. Youth vaping epidemic unfortunately continues today. More than 20% of high schoolers vape. The CDC National Youth Tobacco Survey reveals the truth about youth vaping, which is far from an epidemic. How far from an epidemic is youth vaping? Youth alcohol use is 37%. Pot smoking and illegal drug use is at 20%. Binge drinking is at 16%. Youth experimentation with a vape is 13%. But actual youth vaping? That's only 3%. Stupid is as stupid does. Care to guess who is sponsoring this bill? Ms. Shaheen, Ms. Murkowski, Mr. Durbin, Ms. Collins, Ms. Baldwin, and Mr. Romney a.k.a. the tobacco anti-vaping crew, how are these people still in office? Well, they're bought and paid for, just like how Michael Bloomberg buys politicians. Gave the Congress the ability to control this president. I bought, 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 I, I got them. Well, now that the global e-cigarette market is expected to reach $24.6 billion a year by 2027, or $60 billion by 2025, depending on who you believe, there is no doubt that the companies with the deepest pockets are going to determine who gets to still sell vaping products to us and who's got to die along the way. But it doesn't end there. The only reason smoking rates are increasing in the UK is because vape shops were not considered essential services during the COVID lockdowns. Doing so drove 600,000 people back to smoking in the UK. You know what else is even worse? Because vapes weren't accessible during the lockdowns, 18 to 21 year olds went to their local corner shop or stole analog cigarettes from their relatives and then began smoking. The truth butter has the rage sweat flowing already. Philip Morris is continuing their little adventure into the pharmacological aspect of business to make money on the suffering of its customers. Ethical concerns as big tobacco hustles into healthcare. 
These ruins are found in vape shops all across North America. They were caused by an act of war. Anti-smoking Puritans against anti-smoking ex-smokers. Ex-smokers who save thousands of lives selling the most effective way to give up smoking are now facing potential bankruptcy and utter ruin. Meanwhile, prude oligarchs like Michael Bloomberg and NGOs who once fought for the exact same outcome continue using prohibition to decimate what's left of this altruistic industry. Science continues to prove the public health benefits of vaping, but far less tangible is the damage caused by scattered prohibition and piecemeal regulations. Well, all that is going to change on September 9th, because the court order deadline has created a cliff edge for the vaping world. This week, it's dire distress in the U.S., and internationally, the news isn't much better. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending September 12th, 2021. You know, the previous video I uploaded two weeks ago was just an oversimplification of how the PMTA road has already decimated vaping in the United States. But even that video comes far short of accurately describing what's going on. No e-cigarette products in the United States are legally licensed for marketing. TaiwanSina.com documents the global carnage caused by the FDA's actions. 43% plunge overnight. The e-cigarette industry is bleeding and the giants can't hold it. On September 10th, the Legislative Council Smoking Amendment Bill Committee met to complete the deliberations on the amendment to ban the use of heated tobacco and e-cigarettes. Once passed, the bill is likely to affect Hong Kong's transit function as an e-cigarette export for overseas markets. Meanwhile, British American Tobacco's Views becomes the number one global vaping brand. Announced on September 8th, British American Tobacco announced that Views is now the number one global vaping brand. What was once thought of is moving the vape industry from the gray area into a legal tested product that is safe for adults to consume all across the nation has now had the FDA deem all these items to the black market and they're all considered black market products. Are we ever going to be allowed anything besides second class citizen status? Well, not as long as social media misinformation about vaping is harmful for smokers. The majority of adults, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is the first source of health-related information. And as long as these social media platforms continue to push the ubiquity of inaccurate, misleading, and outright false information, people's health choices and their very lives will continue to suffer. This misinformation can deter cigarette smokers from lowering their health risks by switching to e-cigarettes completely, and thus lowering the harms of exposing their loved ones to secondhand smoke exposure. The CDC advises that e-cigarettes have the potential to benefit adult smokers if used as a complete substitute for regular cigarettes and other smoked tobacco products. Cigarette smokers were less likely to purchase e-cigarettes after being briefly exposed to tweets falsely saying that e-cigarettes are as harmful or more harmful than smoking. The New York Times still doesn't understand the difference between vaping black market weed and regular e-cigarettes. U.S. national news media, bad news bias, is killing 320,000 annually. The New York Times isn't alone publishing misinformation. This week, the Wall Street Journal, in silent partnership with the American Legacy Foundation, otherwise known as Truth Initiative, attempted disseminating a new anti-vaping campaign around a fake product called Depression Stick. The campaign should be titled, This Campaign May Cost You Your Life. Not only is this campaign being pushed in the print online media, but it's also slated in commercial form 
to air during NFL games. New study reveals common misunderstandings among tobacco and e-cigarette users related to the risk of harm from nicotine. Researchers found that a large proportion of those surveyed incorrectly understood the risk of harm from nicotine in cigarettes and from other products that contain nicotine, including e-cigarettes and nicotine replacement therapies. This was particularly evident in those with serious mental health conditions. So it's no wonder the Truth Initiative is taking advantage of those with mental illness to promote a depression stick. What's worse is Twitter and YouTube are accomplices in this atrocity that is taking place right now. Science has proven the benefits of nicotine. Nicotine promotes weight loss, supports healthy gut, repairs tissues. Nicotine enhances performance and protects against Parkinson's, Tourette's, Alzheimer's, ulcerative colitis, sleep apnea. Nicotine also increases neurotransmitters, have antidepressant properties, and possess neuroprotective properties. Yet, this is only true if you don't get nicotine from combustible tobacco. We all know smoking negates any potential health benefit. And the reason vaping is the holy grail for smokers. It's becoming very obvious that electronic cigarettes push even the most skeptical smokers to quit smoking. Encouraging American study, daily use of electronic device can persuade even unwilling adult smokers to quit. Daily use of the e-cigarette can push even unwilling adult smokers to stop changing their plans, deciding to say goodbye to burnt tobacco. The one coordinated by Karen A. Casa of the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center in Buffalo, New York, is not the first study to find that e-cigarettes have health benefits for even the most heavy smokers, prompting them to significantly reduce consumption or even to abandon them altogether. U.S. cigarette sales rise for the first time in 20 years. U.S. Federal Trade Commission reported last week that cigarette sales rose from $202 billion to $203 billion. No surprise when you realize smokers are switching back to traditional cigarettes from vaping devices in response to the restrictions on e-cigarette flavors. And that's according to the Wall Street Journal. Meanwhile, Altria shares are up 16% so far this year. Last month, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized the sale of the View Solo, a first-of-its-kind acknowledgement that ends electronic nicotine delivery system products have a positive impact on public health. According to the FDA's Technical Project Lead Review, studies have shown that daily ends use is associated with significant reductions in combusted cigarette use. The review also suggests that devices like the View Solo are much less toxic than cigarettes, greatly reduce smokers' exposure to carcinogens, and appeal mainly to cigarette-using individuals. According to one study, if every U.S. smoker switched to e-cigarettes, it would prevent between 1.6 and 6.6 .6 million premature deaths. Public Health England are supporting the use of e-cigarettes in a bid to help people stop smoking. North Bristol NHS Trust turns to vaping. North Bristol NHS Trust is to introduce vaping so it can achieve a smoke-free status and has now decided to follow the example set by West Midlands where the Sandwell and West Birmingham Trust allowed two vape stores to open right next to accident and emergency departments. Options that we're considering will include designated outdoor vaping areas, selling e-cigarettes commercially, and that was training for staff. We've got a lot of evolving evidence that e-cigarettes or vaping are a really powerful tool to help quit smoking. And we've got more and more evidence that it's dramatically safer than smoking and also seems to really work for people trying to quit smoking. Moving on to our science segment for the week, Sky Vape Italy reports, smoking cessation, new study on addiction, e-cigarette more effective method. Published in scientific journal Addiction, it's titled The Effectiveness of Using E-Cigarettes for Quitting Smoking Compared 
to other cessation methods among adults in the United Kingdom. 1,155 participants were studied to find when used daily, electronic cigarettes appear to facilitate abstinence from smoking when compared to using no help. The results of this study indicate a clear benefit of daily use of e-cigarettes to quit smoking. Compared to using no help, the odds of achieving abstinence for one month at follow-up were over three times greater for those who daily use disposable cartridge e-cigarettes to quit, and over five times greater for those who daily used a refillable or modular electronic cigarette to quit. Daily use of electronic cigarettes showed clear benefits over the evidence-based methods of quitting. Neither nicotine replacement therapy, smoking cessation medications such as bupropion, varinicline, nor any combination of these aids were associated with abstinence from smoking. Here's a Eureka alert about a peer-reviewed publication from the University of East Anglia. Flavored vapes less harmful to young people than smoking and could help teen smokers quit. Published in Addiction, this systematic review looks at young people's use of vape flavors. Reporting of views and experiences from more than 500,000 under the age of 18. This paper even studied if flavors resulted in young people smoking. And you know what they found? Found no evidence that using flavored e-liquids attracted young people to go on to taking up tobacco smoking. We have the University of Colorado publish the exact same question. Does vaping as a smoking cessation tool outweigh its risks to youth? The FDA based its views ruling largely on 50 studies with more than 12,000 participants that suggested e-cigarettes were an effective tool in helping adult smokers of combustible cigarettes quit. And now from Johannesburg, South Africa, we find the exact same controversial study claims. Flavored vapes are less harmful than cigarettes for young people. Controversial study claims. Ensuring the continued availability of a range of e-liquid flavors is likely to be important in encouraging young people who smoke to switch to vaping as a less harmful alternative. Harm reduction may have a better approach for smokers with HIV than strict smoking cessation. Let's be honest, folks, okay? Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death. It doesn't matter whether you have HIV or ED or whatever. Worldwide, tobacco use causes more than 7 million deaths per year. If the pattern of smoking all over the globe doesn't change, more than 8 million people a year will die from diseases related directly to the combustion of tobacco by 2030. And tobacco harm reduction works. It works to quit smoking. It works to improve your health. A five-year study by real scientists has proven that smokers who switch to vaping ameliorate objective and subjective COPD outcomes. Here's the definition for those of you that don't know what ameliorate means, okay? But it means that these people improve their lungs. Their COPD starts to diminish. It gets better and that the benefits are gained persist long-term. We've talked about this study before. There's a link in the description below. Please go check it out if you haven't seen it and didn't know about it till today. Flavored e-cigarettes are no more associated with youth smoking initiation than tobacco flavors. This same cohort study of 17,929 participants proved vaping flavors was associated with increased adult smoking cessation. Electronic nicotine delivery systems may help some people stop smoking cigarettes. What did this study conducted at Penn State University College of Medicine find? At the six-month mark, significantly more participants in the 36 milligram per milliliter nicotine group, about 11%, reported cigarette abstinence. Approximately 5% of participants in the 8 milligram per milliliter group reported cigarette abstinence at the six-month mark. And I don't even need to remind you that according to the CDC, only 6% of those who actively try to quit smoking can achieve 
smoking cessation. E-cigarettes, harm reduction and tobacco control. A path forward, question mark. In the time that it takes a person to read the commentary, approximately 25 Americans and 300 people globally died from combustible tobacco because tobacco harm reduction has not been fully implemented like it should be. In the time it's taken you to watch this video and get to this point in the video, 25 Americans and 300 people worldwide died of complications arising directly from their combustion of tobacco. Stop.